Welcome to another Subspace Games YouTube video tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the Godot game engine again and do the second scripting tutorial. So let's start off by going to the GodotEngine.org website, click on documentation, scroll down a little bit, click on scripting continued. This takes you to the GitHub site where the source code is found and also these tutorials. And let's jump right in by talking about processing. Now processing um, is the idea that there are things that are going to run every frame. And in order to get that to turn on, as you can see in the tutorial here, we do a set process function. That turns on the, um, the processing, so we pass it a value of true. And then we declare a function, node dot pro underscore process. And whatever we stick into that function is going to happen every um, every time a frame um, is called. Now node is obviously just you know like a label, a button, anything like that. So let's jump into Godot and let's see how it works. Now the first thing you'll notice is I already have some code on here. Um, I've coded through the tutorial. I just wanted to make it a little bit easier so you guys don't have to struggle through me typing and and whatnot. Um, and because we already covered some of these things in the previous tutorials. So I created a scene um, and the scene is just called new underscore scene and then I put a label on here. You can just not pay attention or a button sorry. You can just not pay attention to that. It's for um, something a little bit later. But what I started off with was just this root label. Now on the root label I added a script and if you click on the little scroll it takes you to the script that you just saw a second ago. So you can see what we're doing here is we're extending the label. Um, we've created a, a variable called accum. This is going to be an accumulator. And in the ready function, uh, we've set processing to true. So set underscore process true. The ready function, I think we've covered that before, but basically what it is is this fires off whenever the assets are all loaded in the scene. Um, just fires off that first time. So uh, as soon as the label gets loaded, it sets processing to true. And then since we've overridden the process function with this function here, this is going to get processed every time a frame um, is called. Now the delta that gets passed in, this is just the amount of time that's passed since the last frame or the last cycle of the game. So we'll take the accumulator. It started out as zero, as you can see. So we're going to do a plus equals, which takes the value of the accumulator and then also adds uh, the value of uh, whatever's on this side, this being delta, and assigns it back to the value. So we're just taking that time shift, adding it to the accumulated function or the accumulated value, and then we're calling. Since this is a label, again, we're extending the label class. We're calling the set text uh, function, which is just going to change the text on the label, and so we're going to pass the accumulated value and we're doing this str which is basically casting the uh, since the accumulator is a an integer type variable a number we're going to cast it to a string type so that it will be uh, we're able to pass it to through to the text on the label this other stuff that I've commented out is for uh, the next stage that we're going to do so let's just go ahead and fire it off the way it is now so we'll jump up here, we'll run our scene. And you can see, here's that label. Here are, is the time as it passes and the label value is being updated. This is happening uh, every frame. So you can put any processing that you need to occur on you know, every frame that's being cycled, you can put it in there and it'll, it will be processed. Okay, the next thing that, that they cover in the tutorial is the idea of groups. Um, now a group is the ability that we have to take a bunch of nodes and we can put them in a group which can then receive uh, commands or um, information all at the same time. This is helpful if you've got, I don't know, let's say, well the example they use is let's say you have all the enemies in the scene you can put them in a group so then the data that you pass to them or if you're gonna call uh, a function to have them do a certain behavior all the enemies will receive that that information so let's jump over to 
Godot and see how that that works. Uh, what I did, if we go back here, we can see that I've added these labels. I've kind of scattered them throughout the scene. Actually, you can see it's a little bit bigger than what I have here because I was running it full screen earlier. Some of the stuff's a little bit off the screen. So I've taken these labels and uh, added them to a group. In order to do that, there's this little button up here which has the circles that are kind of overlapped. If you click on it, you can add a group by typing in the name of the group there and then just hitting add. Now I, I typed in labels earlier. In fact, I'll just show you. I can remove it. We'll close it. We'll come back in here. We'll hit the group button again. You can see there's no group. So if I type in labels, now there's a group if I hit add. So this shows uh, all the different groups that this label happens to be in. So I, I don't have to just do labels. I could have put, you know, um, trees or whatever, and I could add it to a whole bunch of different groups. Now we'll hit close. We can come look at label two. We can see that it's also in the labels group. And same thing with label three. Uh, now I will say the one thing that that I haven't figured out and I don't believe that there's a way to do this. Uh, it's also one of the nice things about open source is that somebody could fix this at some point if they wanted to and add this functionality. But I couldn't find a way to say show me everything that's in the labels group. So I couldn't find um, like a viewer that says okay here's all my groups and if you click on a group it shows you okay here's all the labels. I haven't found a way to manage that yet. Um, so I could see where if you had a large scene it would be kind of a pain to have to click on each thing and go oh which groups is it? Oh okay it's in the labels group. But anyways now that we have our labels set up uh, what I did is I created a script that would be for each of these labels. I just called it label.gd and again you can see it extends label and what I did, the only thing that I really changed here is I put the change text so whenever this function is called it's going to set the text to the on the label to happy yeah just you know random value whatever and then on each one of these labels I then made sure that this script was assigned to label.gd so all these labels share the same script and if we come back to the main label uh, actually let's go to new scene here and again we have to use our arrow keys to scroll up I'm not sure why the scroll bar is not on the side but let's go ahead and, and undo some of these um, comments that we have on here and the first thing we'll do is I added a node called button you can see here it was just a button so that when I press this button it's going to do something to the entire group so we're going to get the node button we're going to connect to its pressed event and we're going to um, wire it up to something that's in this class so we say self and we're wiring it up to the on discovered function now since I'm leaving all the other code there that timer is still going to function um, along with the other stuff that I'm adding here now we have this undiscovered function. What does it do? It gets the scene and it calls the group labels. Um, can't remember what this first value does, but labels is the the name of the group that we had, and then change text is going to be the function that gets called in that group. So if we jump back over here, we see that yes, indeed, it's change text, and it's going to call happy. So let's save all this. Control S. Let's run our script. So we have our button here, and if you remember, it's we've rigged up to the or wired up to the on press event, and it's going to call out to the group, and it's going to call the set text function on that entire group all at once. So we click press, and lo and behold, there it is. Our three labels all say happy. Um, so we're able to call that that group text um, and change it. Now the, the last thing that they, or last two things that we talk about in this tutorial 
there's an interesting feature in Godot and that's a notification idea. Um, as you can see that in their description they say that you're not really going to use it very much. The idea is that the game engine sends out these notifications and you can respond to them. Um, the reason why it's not really used is because these overridable functions that we've been using like inner scene ready process all those things that's this notification system it's just a better way of using it um, so if you notice here if we use the notification function and pass in what so you're gonna get notification ready this is the same thing as overriding the ready function notification process same thing as process so they say it's it's too low too low level really for most of the use that you'll have in the game um, but there may be some special reasons why you'd want to do that instead uh, you should use these overridable functions so these are available to all nodes so most of the things that um, you're gonna have in the game engine like labels buttons all those things that we've looked at so far they all um, inherit from the node class and so they're gonna have these and as you can see each one of these fires off at a different time. They're they have different purposes and different uses. But any time that you have a need to uh, use these, all you have to do is just set up that function as we've done in Godot, you know, on the, for example, function ready. Uh, you know, we set this up right here, function ready. So anytime that gets called, it's gonna fire off these events, our uh, processes function. So anyways, that's all there is for the second tutorial on scripting. Um, the next tutorial, we're going to take a look at a simple 2D game. They go through Pong, um, and it's pretty easy to set up. It's not very full-featured as far as games go, but we're just learning. So I think it's it's pretty interesting how little work you really need to do with, with Godot and actually get something working. So we'll, we'll take a look at that next time. And... Uh, Thanks for being here and we look forward to seeing you for our next video.